Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to share with you some exciting and disturbing information about the connection between mercury and Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroiditis. Um, this is going to excite a lot of people because there's a lot of people uh, in the healthcare world that get really intensely focused on you know metals and chemicals. And so a lot of times some of the patients I see they'll have been to like the yeast doctor and the mercury doctor and the iodine doctor. And um, not that anybody's doing anything wrong, everybody means to help, but I think this today is going to share some very uh, important information for you so that you can get a little more understanding about what's possibly going on with, you know, with your condition if you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. So there's a study came out this year and it looked at the association between total blood mercury and having autoimmune thyroid. So what is, first of all, what does autoimmune thyroid mean? Well, what we're talking about is Hashimoto's. And in Hashimoto's, there are two antibodies you can check. There's a TPO antibody, thyroid peroxidase, and then there's also TGB, which stands for thyroglobulin. You can check for those antibodies. Um, a lot of times, frankly, doctors only check one of them. They'll check TPO, but you always need to be checked for both. And this study I'm going to point out to you will explain why you need to be checked for both. So I looked at total blood mercury and whether you've got positive antibodies to thyroid peroxidase or positive antibodies for thyroglobulin. Um, now, both of those, by the way, are what you use to make thyroid hormones. So if you have antibodies to them, that means you're probably attacking them and destroying them, and therefore you become hypothyroid. So a total of mercury uh, correlated with that. Now, why would they look at mercury? Well, first off, you understand that women are at more of an increased risk developing uh, autoimmune diseases than men are. Uh, secondly, mercury is known, known to cause autoimmune reactions, to cause autoimmunity. And third, mercury accumulates in the thyroid gland. So there's three good reasons for them to look at this association. And without going through all the statistics, they looked at uh, women from a national database from the years 2007 through 2008. You know, and they excluded uh, pregnant women, lactating women, women on uh, birth control pills. And here's what they found. They found that women that had total blood mercury of greater than 1.8 micrograms per liter had almost two and a half times the odds of having positive antibodies for thyroglobulin, but not TPO. Now this is a very important point. There's going to be a lot of um, doctors watching this video, and so this is for them as well. If you, as a patient, get diagnosed with Hashimoto's because, first of all, you had a lot of low thyroid symptoms like depression, hair loss, constipation, brain fog, joint pain, high cholesterol, you had those symptoms, and then luckily somebody tested you, and they ran a TPO antibody test and a TGB antibody test. If it came back that it was only your TGB antibodies that were positive, there's a strong indication that mercury should be suspected as a problem for you. Now, let me tell you what this does not mean. It does not mean that you're currently being exposed to mercury, okay? It could mean that you just have been exposed to mercury like the rest of us. But you are collecting it and you're not detoxifying it. That's a little bit beyond what we have time to talk about today. But it does not mean that you have a current mercury exposure. If your thyroglobulin antibodies only show up positive, it does not mean that you have a mercury problem right now and you need to go do chelation or heavy metal detoxification. Now that is a very advanced thing to do, and I've seen a lot of people screw themselves up. I've actually made a few people sick in the past doing that. It really more strongly implicates, just so you know, that you have to work on, uh, I'm not even going to tell you because I think you'll go off and try to self-medicate. But what you need to do is find someone who understands a safe way to help your body deal with mercury, and it's not chelation. I'm just going to tell you, it's not chelation. Well, I guess I will tell you. It really works more on decreasing the immune system's reaction to the mercury. Okay, Because a lot of us have mercury, but a lot of us aren't reacting to it. So the real key is if you've got mercury that may have stimulated this autoimmunity, uh, and the, which is showing up as thyroglobulin antibodies, you probably still have that mercury. But it is a mistake to immediately think, I need to detoxify. i got to go get some DMSA, or I need to find somebody. i got to go find the mercury doctor. I need to take all my fillings out. Now, just so you know, as a side note, there is research that shows that when women get their amalgam fillings take out, a lot of their Hashimoto symptoms go away. Now, that's something to consider, and maybe we'll have time to talk about that some other time. But the takeaway point is this for everybody watching this. Mercury is associated with having positive elevated antibodies to thyroglobulin. That's Hashimoto's. So that means whatever doctor you see needs to run that test 
And number two, if that's the only one that pops up, you got to find somebody that understands what to do about that. And a lot of it's going to be helping your immune system calm down as well as helping you basically neutralize that mercury and possibly get it out of your body. So important information, um, please don't forget it.